What's common to these famous people? All of them would proudly identify as Anglo-Indians. You see, among the things the British left behind was also their gene pool. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the East India Company actually encouraged their men to take Indian wives. They wanted to create a permanent settlement of people who would be loyal to the British. The result, a mixed race of people, fittingly called the Anglo-Indians. The Anglo-Indians at the time maintained a distinct identity, typically British names, European clothing and English customs. But to the British and the Indians at the time, the Anglo-Indians were difficult to slot, neither British nor native Indian. Then in the mid-1800s, the British began a massive project, building the Indian railways. The English supervisors were finding it difficult to connect with natives. The Anglo-Indians, on the other hand, were familiar with the local language, climate and customs. Soon they started taking over the role of supervisors. Every time a new railway station was built, a new railway colony would come up, mostly populated by Anglo-Indians. Today, there are less than 150,000 Anglo-Indians in India. Many of them live in Tamil Nadu, many still live close to railway colonies. English naturally was the first language of Anglo-Indians and some of the earliest English schools in India began in Chennai. This is St. George's Anglo-Indian School and it is the oldest English medium school in Asia. It had its roots in 1715 as a charitable institution for Anglo-Indian kids. That makes it over 300 years old, just 75 years younger than the city of Madras itself.